Hey everyone, got a cool vintage motor for you guys today. I picked this up during uh, uh, a junk run and I've been looking for one of these for a very long time and I've never got my hands on one till now. This is a repulsion start induction motor. I don't know too much about it. Um, uh, we'll read the specs off it here for you. But uh, I don't know its manufacture date. So it's a Leland motor. Um, it's a 1 sixth horsepower, 110 volts, a single phase, 1725 RPM. Uh, the amps is not really readable, but I think. I think it's a three. It's it's hard to tell. Um, max temp rise 40C. Manufactured for pumps and softeners limited on London, Ontario. Now it was in rougher shape when I first got it. This actually has been cleaned. The paint's mostly actually still intact, which is good. I've I've actually cleaned the inside of this as well. For the most part, anyway. But uh, yeah, I would say I tried to do some research. I could not find this particular one. It's um, the only model stuff on it is a, it's a Type A S. Uh, for reference, it says two five three nine nine five six. But that's it. And it's a frame twenty. 23. On the outside, it's very similar to any any other, you know, induction motor these days. But this has got this has got brushes in it. It's got a, a commentator and um, a wired wired armature and everything. If you listen carefully while I rotate by hand. You can hear the brush. Before I open it, I will run it for you, and I'll just I'll stick a meter on it so you can watch it, and I'll I'll run it up slow with my Variac. So hopefully you can see that. There we go. There's 30 volts AC, and we have rotation. Forty volts. Forty-two. Forty-four. It'll get to a point where you'll, where you will hear the. Um, the centrifugal clutch activate and disengage the uh, brushes. There's 48, 50, 50. There we go. The brushes on this don't actually physically disengage, but they electrically will. So that's now that's now considered an induction motor. And that, and that actually disengaged the brushes at 52 volts. So I will, I will now put it up to its operating volts, 120 volts. There you go. So that's spinning at 1725 RPMs, 1 sixth horsepower. Other than the brushes staying engaged, it actually sounds its really good. The bearings sound great. It's running very smooth, has no trouble starting and stopping. These things are known for having a lot of startup torque. Now I'll see if I can I'll see if I can show you in the back here of it starting and stopping. I don't know if I can. It's pretty 
it's pretty well enclosed. So you can see the brushes right there. I'm going to back this off to about, say, 46 volts. Now you can see the you can see the commentator right there, just behind that flat plate. And if you watch carefully as I speed this up, you will see a spring pop out, and that's when it disengages the brushes. There's 50 volts. I can see the spring starting to come up already. There it is. So that's when it's actually disengaged the brushes. I'll do that one more time so you can see it. If you can miss it the first time. Right there. It's almost like it's bulging out. I don't know if you can actually see any sparks when it's running. No, you can't. But the brushes are actually at a 45 degree angle to each other. One there and one there. Alright, before I just open it up, so there's your two brushes. Still a fair amount left. And they're in good shape. Just held in place by your two, uh, your two screws. Alright. Now these these are quite heavy. These are all cast iron. There's the only bit of damage is right here. Other than that, and that's on the bottom. You don't even really see it. But the rest of it is completely intact. I've like I say I've I've cleaned all this. There was a lot of gunk in there. I haven't cleaned everything yet, but I've cleaned. I've cleaned the front. I haven't cleaned the back out. I don't know if I can because there's some electrical connections and God knows they're probably pretty frail and I don't want to uh, make this thing... I don't want to kill this thing, basically. So you can see your you can see your oil groove in there, in, in the bearing. It goes all the way around. It's hard to see. There you go. You see the groove in there. It goes all the way around. And that and goes onto your 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 port there, your oil port right there. Here's your armature. Big beefy armature this thing's got. It's it's heavy. This thing probably weighs like uh, if I had to guess five six pounds minimum. So you got your cooling fan. Like I said, I haven't cleaned it all. I've I started to clean this and I realized just how gunky it was. So I I haven't got around to really polishing it up yet. Um, I did I did polish this. This was quite rusty. As you can see, I've I've got it quite shiny now. It's not perfect, but it's quite shiny. And I did polish these. Now they've gotten a little bit blacker because I have ran it, done some test runs on it, but they are quite a bit darker than that. So I. It's kind of hard to show you. So here's here's your centrifugal switch. It's just a spring that wraps around it completely. And um, when when it reaches speed, these notches here. Well, 
I can actually push on it. It raises your spring up. But what these what these notches actually are, I'm just gonna have to put this down. It's getting heavy on my my arm's getting tired. It's so heavy. Um, what these actually are are your electrical connections. So when they're in the down position, the um, this here is actually engaged with the brushes. When these pull up, your brush your brushes actually they don't move away, but they electrically disengage from this. Um, I don't know when you want a clutch or something. It's it's really neat. It's too bad the brushes don't pull away, but and what are you gonna do? It's my first repulsion start induction motor, so I'm not gonna complain. And then you've got your whole stator assembly. Now this is the part I actually haven't cleaned. I, I cleaned around the front here, but I have not cleaned the back. You can see it's kind of gungy in there. So you got your stator. Looks like it looks like a four pole stator. Similar to smaller um synchronous motors. There's where your two brushes come, so they're at a 45 degree angle to each other. And um, your wire comes right there, but you can't really see it. They're, they're fairly simple. There are the ones that have the brushes actually pull away from the armature and actually disengage. Um, they're a little more complicated. They got a, you know, a clutch assembly that moves, moves them away and all that. Um, you can say this one's only got the spring part. And um, which makes it simpler. There's a lot less to go wrong. Really, the only thing to go wrong is if the spring actually breaks. And I see no signs of the spring actually breaking. I've had the spring off and just checked it over. It looks all right. The mechanism moves freely. So yeah, it's in great shape. It just needs to be, just needs to be cleaned a little bit more. Um, I don't know what else. Not really else. Anything. Else to um, go over? Not really. If anyone give me a manufacturer date on this, I'd love to know. But as I'm guessing, it's probably somewhere in the 19 between the 19 uh, 1930s to 1940s, maybe. It could be older than that. It could be newer. But repulsion start motors have been around for a long time. And in case you're wondering that these wire windings look black and burnt, that's not, they're not burnt. That's just how they look back then. They were coated in black. It's not clear varnish um, that they use today. So there's, there's nothing electrically wrong with this. It's actually, well, you saw it running. It's in great shape. It's only drawn about three amps when it's uh, free, um, free spinning, no load. Maybe I'll stick a fan on it and then run it and s and um, actually maybe I'll put it back together and uh, put a fan on it and then um, just show you guys what it's like under load. All right, I've mounted the motor to a bench and I've got a big industrial fan here and uh, I'll start off by uh, gradually picking up the volts until uh, the brushes disengage. Um, I have actually had this, I did test this once already, so everything's tight and everything's safe. Well, as safe as it can be with a big metal fan spinning at 1725 RPMs, but you know what I mean. So, and I got my amp meter on there. So, uh, here we go. So, 30 volts. Drawn 1.8 amps. The brushes have a kind of like a cool sound to them. So there's 30, it's 40, 2.16 amps, 50. Now at 50 volts under no load is when the brushes would actually uh, kick off. But this is going much slower. It's two and a half amps. 
to 60. Two point seven eight seventy volts. Eighty up to three point four amps. volts. It's hard to tell. I think the brushes have actually kicked off. 100 volts. 110. 120. There we go. So we're running at 4 amps. Just about 4 amps. And we're at full speed. This motor has no trouble running this fan at 1725 RPM. The blades aren't pitched too, too steep, but it, it, it blows quite a bit of air. It's pretty good. Now, well, this is only a 5 amp Variac. I'll switch to my, I'll switch to a 10 amp, and uh, I'll give this a full, a full power startup. See how, see how uh, quick this goes. All right, since I haven't run this at full speed right from the start. I'm going to just do this from a little bit farther away, just in case something weird happens, but I don't foresee any problems. So I'm going to, I'm going to start at 80 volts, and I'm just going to flick it on, and we'll see how quick it starts up. And I don't know if the, you guys can read the amp meter from here, but it's still on. So here's 80 volts. Now, I don't think the uh, brushes have disengaged from that speed. So I will bring it up to a hundred volts. At this voltage, the, the switch should disengage the brushes. So here's a hundred volts. Yeah, there we go. So that's 100 volts. All right, well, I'm gonna go right up to 120 volts. So this would be the same as just plugging it right into a wall outlet. That's pretty quick for a, only a 1 6 horsepower motor. It's drawn about eight amps on startup. I'll do that one more time. And it doesn't look like anything's going to come off, so I'll get, come in a little bit closer this time. Nothing looks loose there. Now everything's still pretty tight, so full power again. Man, that motor runs nice. So the, on the plate, I thought it was about three amps running it must be five because it runs over three amps when it's no, got no load on it well uh, ladies and gentlemen that about does it for this vintage repulsion start induction motor trying to get one of these for years and I finally got a hold of one and it's a working one too which is great so uh, hit the like button if you uh, like this video hit the dislike if you didn't like it um, subscribe and um, there's more to come thanks for watching everyone